HIV AIDS Presented by Suraj P. Suresh Research Scholar, MG University, Katayam Structure of Presentation What is HIV? What is AIDS? How does HIV spread, and does not? What happens after HIV enters body? Testing, Diagnosis, and Treatment What is AIDS? AIDS stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. Acquired means neither innate nor inherited, but transmitted from one infected person to another. Immune is the body's system of defense. Deficiency means decreased levels of functioning. Syndrome means a group of signs and symptoms. AIDS is the advanced stage of HIV infection. It is a disabling and incurable infection caused by HIV. The first cases were reported in 1981. People do not inherit AIDS through their genes. Instead, they acquire AIDS through contact with HIV. AIDS is primarily a sickness of the body's immune system. People with AIDS have a deficiency in their immune systems, meaning that the immune system no longer works properly. Without a healthy immune system, people infected with HIV get sick with other diseases much more easily, and get well much more slowly, if at all. AIDS causes many different diseases and opportunistic infections, so it is not just one illness but a syndrome made up of many symptoms and illnesses. Roots of Transmission of HIV Sexual root Male to female, female to male Male to male Parenteral root Transmission of infected blood Sharing of infected needles Parental root Mother to child HIV transmission HIV transmitted from an HIV infected person to non infected person through sexual contact, direct blood contact, and mother to baby. HIV transmission through sexual routes. Sexual transmission of HIV happens when infected semen, blood, or vaginal secretions enter the bloodstream of a partner. Although HIV can be transmitted during vaginal or oral penetration, unprotected anal sex by a male or female seems to be the most dangerous. The risk to acquire HIV depends mainly on three factors. 1. The number of sexual partners. 2. The prevalence of HIV infection in these partners. 3. The probability of virus transmission during sexual contact. HIV transmission. HIV transmitted from an HIV infected person to non infected person through sexual contact, direct blood contact, and mother to baby. Transmission of HIV through blood. If a person who is HIV positive donates blood products, such as an organ or tissue, the person who receives the blood product is likely to develop an HIV infection too. Sharing needles or syringes, rinse water, or other equipment used to prepare injection of drugs with someone who has HIV. HIV can live in a used needle for a long time depending on temperature and other factors. If adequate safety practices are not in place, healthcare workers can also be at risk of HIV from cuts made by a needle or sharp object, needle stick injury, with infected blood on it. However, the risk of occupational exposure is very low in most countries. HIV transmission HIV transmitted from an HIV infected person to non-infected person through sexual contact, direct blood contact, and mother to baby. Transmission of HIV from mother to child. A mother infected with HIV can pass the virus to her baby via her blood during pregnancy and birth, and through her breast milk when breastfeeding. How it does not spread. 
An HIV-infected person won't transmit HIV infection through kissing and hugging. Sharing clothes, food, toilet, offices, telephones, utensils, and insect bite. How does HIV weaken the immune system? HIV enters the body. WBCs are attacked by HIV. The virus multiplies inside WBCs and infects other WBCs. Infected WBCs are eventually destroyed. Leads to a reduction in the number of WBCs. Ultimately leads to greatly reduced immunity. May take 6 months to 10 years or more for progression to AIDS. On an average, 50% of infected people take about 8 years to progress to AIDS. Clinical Staging of HIV-AIDS Primary HIV Infection Clinical Stage 1 Clinical Stage 2 Clinical Stage 3 Clinical Stage 4 Primary HIV Infection Asymptomatic Acute Retroviral Syndrome Early HIV infection can cause a range of symptoms, which can be very similar to the flu or other common viral illnesses. These symptoms are sometimes called seroconversion illness, or acute retroviral syndrome. As many as 90% of those diagnosed with HIV will have experienced one or more of the following symptoms, usually within the first four weeks of initial exposure to the virus, fever, rash, headache, feeling generally unwell, aches and pains, mouth ulcers, sore throat, night sweats, weight loss, tiredness, swollen glands, etc. Symptoms typically appear a few days to a few weeks after exposure to HIV and can persist for two to four weeks, although swollen glands may last longer. Clinical Stage 1 Asymptomatic No symptoms reported and no signs on examination. Persistent generalized lymphadenopathy. Swollen or enlarged lymph nodes 1 cm, in two or more non-contiguous sites, excluding inguinal nodes, in absence of known cause. Clinical Stage 2. Moderate unexplained weight loss, 10% of presumed or measured body weight. Recurrent respiratory tract infections, sinusitis, tonsillitis, bronchitis, otitis media pharyngitis, herpes zoster, angular chiaitis, recurrent oral ulceration, papular pruritic eruptions, sebriac dermatitis, fungal nail infections. Clinical Stage 3 Unexplained severe weight loss, 10% of presumed or measured body weight. Unexplained chronic diarrhea for longer than one month. Unexplained persistent fever intermittent or constant for longer than one month. Persistent oral candida. Oral hairy leukoplakia pulmonary TB. Severe presumed bacterial infections, for example pneumonia, empyema, pyomyositis. Bone or joint infection, meningitis, bacteremia, excluding pneumonia. Acute necrotizing ulcerative stomatitis, gingivitis or periodontitis. Unexplained anemia. 8 grams slash DL, neutropenia, 500 slash M3, and or chronic thrombocytopenia, 50 000 slash M3. Clinical Stage 4 HIV Wasting Syndrome Pneumocystis Pneumonia Recurrent Severe Presumed Bacterial Pneumonia Chronic Herpes Simplex Infection, Oral Labial, Genital or Anal Rectal of More Than One Month Duration or Visceral at Any Site esophageal candidiasis, or candida of trachea, bronchia or lungs, extrapulmonary TB, Kaposi sarcoma, cytomegalovirus infection, retinitis or infection of other organs, central nervous system toxoplasmosis. Clinical Stage 4, Continued. HIV encephalopathy, extrapulmonary cryptococcosis including meningitis, Disseminated non-tuberculous mycobacteria infection. Progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. 
Chronic cryptosporidiosis. Chronic isosporiasis. Disseminated mycosis, extrapulmonary histoplasmosis, coccidiomycosis, penicilliosis. Recurrent septicemia, including non typhoidal salmonella. Lymphoma, cerebral or B cell non Hodgkin. Invasive cervical carcinoma. Atypical disseminated leishmaniasis. Opportunistic infections. Opportunistic infections, OIS, are infections that occur more frequently and are more severe in individuals with weak and immune systems, including people with HIV. OIS are less common now than they were in the early days of HIV and AIDS because better treatments reduce the amount of HIV in a person's body and keep a person's immune system stronger. However, Many people with HIV still develop OIS because they may not know of their HIV infection, they may not be on treatment, or their treatment may not be keeping their HIV levels low enough for their immune system to fight off infections. Geophys Geophys or Integrated Counseling and Testing Centers, ICTC, centers provide HIV counseling and testing and treatment referrals free of cost. ICTCs are located at all medical colleges, district hospitals, general hospitals, Dalyuk hospitals and selected community health centers. People who are tested HIV negative are offered information and counseling to reduce risks and remain HIV negative. People who are found to be HIV positive, that is who have HIV infection, are provided psychosocial support and are referred and linked to prevention, care and treatment services. HIV Diagnosis HIV infection is diagnosed largely by the detection of antibodies against HIV in the blood of infected patients. There are three main types of HIV antibody tests. Enzyme-linked immunosol urban to say, ELISA. Western blot to say. Rapid HIV tests. Diagnosing HIV infection. HIV antibody assays cannot be used to diagnose Acute HIV infection HIV infection in the newborn Acute HIV infection Window period Follows acute infection with HIV, before HIV antibodies can be detected in the patient's bloodstream. Patient is highly infectious, despite testing HIV antibody negative, HIV is replicating rapidly in all parts of the body. 3 weeks to 3 months, typically up to 12 weeks duration but may be shorter in more sensitive HIV antibody assays, particularly those incorporating HIV P24 antigen. Diagnosing HIV infection Diagnosis in the newborn Due to transmission of maternal antibodies, HIV antibody tests cannot be used to diagnose HIV infection in the newborn. Maternal antibodies can be detected for up to 18 months. Non-antibody assays for the early detection of HIV infection in the newborn include HIV P24 antigen Viral culture Detection of viral genes, either HIV DNA or HIV RNA Assays for staging HIV disease and monitoring efficacy of ART CD4 testing Viral load testing Ushis. Ushis are the antiretroviral treatment, ART, centers set up in all the government medical colleges in Kerala, functioning under the Department of Medicine. ARV treatment, drugs for opportunistic infections and the CD4 testing are all provided free of cost to HIV positives. All HIV positive persons can register at ART centers for HIV care. These centers also provide prophylaxis and treatment for opportunistic infections. Counseling is given for ART preparedness and adherence. Sirkshaw Targeted Intervention, Sirkshaw, program focuses in containing the spread of HIV among marginalized and vulnerable high-risk populations. 
The Suraksha projects are aimed at behavioral modification among target communities, from unsafe sexual or injecting practices to safe sex practices and injecting practices. Core Groups, Female Sex Workers, FSWs, Men Having Sex with Men, MSMs, and Injecting Drug Users, IDUs, and Bridge Populations Like Migrants and Truckers. The Suraksha program is being implemented through the community-based organizations, CBO, and non-governmental organizations, NGO. Package of services provided under NACP National AIDS Control Program provides prevention package for the high-risk and the low-risk people. NACP also ensures care, support and treatment for the people living with HIV AIDS. Comprehensive HIV AIDS Care Comprehensive HIV AIDS Care includes Clinical and Nursing Care Psychosocial Support and Counseling Economic and Employment Support Legal Assistance Care and Support for Orphans and Widows Training on Care and Support for Caregivers Prevention is Better Than Cure Thank you.